Don Mara recently came out and said that Joe Shane, the GM, and Brian Dable, the head coach, are safe and there are no changes that are going to be made immediately or for the foreseeable future in this offseason. They will not be losing their jobs, but nothing to say much of Daniel Jones. Is this the right move? Let's talk about it. What is going on guys? What is going on 27 squad? Welcome back in to another video. Before we start this video, as always, huge thank you to the sponsors of this channel, BetUS. Make sure you guys check out BetUS for a 150% sign up bonus up to $2,000 on your first deposit, second and third, 125%. I hope you guys have been having a good season up to this point as far as your uh, your betting goes. I know as Giants fans, we're not having a great season, but hopefully you're making some money out of it. So that being said, let's get on to this video and what this really means. So John Mara was at some presentation for Wellington Mara. They're doing a documentary for NFL Network, and I guess they had time to answer some questions. Pat Leonard of the New York Daily News um, came out with a with an article or came out with a couple of quotes from John Mara saying this. I'm going to say one thing. We are not making any changes this season, and I do not anticipate making any changes in the offseason either. Also adding that he is committed to Joe Shane and Brian Dable and giving them a chance to turn this thing around. And from what I gather, from what I think about that statement, giving them a chance to turn things around, what has been the common denominator here of trying to get things back on track? What has been kind of the anchor in not letting that happen? It's probably Daniel Jones, and apparently there are some quotes out there saying that he didn't want to comment on Daniel Jones about his future here. But then I saw a couple of a couple of uh, quotes saying that they are that he's committed to Daniel Jones. He's looking forward to seeing him play out his contract. This, that, and third. I don't know what what he really means here. I don't know if we can take this at face value. There have been articles in the past where John Maris said Dave Gettleman's job is safe, Joe Judge's job is safe, and then a couple of months later in the offseason, in Joe Judge's case, before the offseason happened, them being fired. So I don't know if this is him just giving a cookie-cutter answer to get the media off his back, or um, he actually means this. He actually wants to give Joe Shane and Brian Dable another chance. And what do I think about this? I know you guys are probably coming in here like, oh, what does KB have to think about it? You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. <laughs> but at the end of the day, of course, what I think doesn't really hold any water to the situation. But to give my honest opinion, I do want to see... Brian Dable more so than Joe Shane, but Brian Dable really get a chance to get his own quarterback. We've seen in the Hard Knocks offseason edition with the Giants that Brian Dable seemed like he did want Jaden Daniels. He seemed more intrigued about Jaden Daniels when asked by Joe Shane if he would trade up for Jaden Daniels. He flat out said yes, like very convincing yes, not like a yes, but why would you ask that question? We have Daniel Jones sort of yes. I think he really wanted Jaden Daniels. I think he really wanted to move on from Daniel Jones. And you can see when uh, Joe Shane, I, I don't know if I have the clip on me, you could see when Joe Shane said, well, if we come out of this draft with no quarterback, I guess we're just sticking with the guys that we have and Daniel. And you can see Brian Dable did not, did not look happy about that, did not look very convinced of that. I don't think he... I think he's just rolling with Daniel Jones as of right now. I don't think he's the biggest fan of him. We've seen him be disappointed time and time again. We've seen him in latest press conferences where he's talking about explosive plays and not being explosive enough. And, you know, him being able to... He's trying to get this team to be explosive. And it really does seem like shots at Daniel Jones because we watched the film. We're watching the film that Brian Dable is watching. And who is the guy that's most, most uh, commonly kind of the the fault of there not being enough explosive plays, it is Daniel Jones. Yes, there are some drops here and there with Darius Slayton and Wandale Robinson. The Giants lead the NFL in drop passes up to this point in the season. However, these are drop passes that are not, not like deep bombs, like 20-plus yard plays. These are passes that are five yard plays, four, fourth and twos and stuff like that, third and third and sixes, you know what I'm saying? So Though, although those are important, that's not the explosive plays that Brian Dable is talking about. He's talking about Daniel Jones missing opportunities deep downfield. 
Now, as far as is it the best move if John Mara, if what he's saying is true and he does not want to replace these two, is it the best move? Like I said, I really want to see what it, what Brian Dable does with a Cam Ward. You know, I doubt Shadur Sanders with his with Dion and what they've said up to this point. I doubt they, even if they are, if, even if Shadur were to be drafted by the Giants, I don't think it would remain so. I think it will, he will pull an Eli Manning on the Giants and and find a, a spot elsewhere. I think Cam Ward is probably the best shot right now. If the Giants were to get a Cam Ward, I really want to see what Brian Dable can do with a Cam Ward. Joe Shane is a little bit of a mixed bag, right? He's had a really good draft up to this point. We don't, there, there's a small sample size, but I really like what we're getting from Malik Neighbors, of course, right? Tyler Newbin seems to be okay. I think people are a little bit overrating Tyler Newbin. He doesn't really do much, I'll be honest with you. I mean, he's there and he's doing his job. I don't think he's special in any sense of the word. Um, But Drew Phillips, our third-round pick, who I've been very critical of in the draft process, has been excellent up to this point. Absolutely excellent. I think he's one of PFF's top-rated rookies, top-graded rookies right now up to this point of the season. And his coverage has been absolutely great. And his tackling. He's one of the best tacklers on the team right now. And he was coming in, uh, as far as in his collegiate career, he was coming in as one of the worst tacklers in the draft. So he's really shirt sure, up on that. And he's been doing a great job. Theo Johnson has been okay he's the starter so they're confident in him he seems like he's gonna be quote-unquote a hit but I I don't I I'm not really sold on Theo Johnson yet and Tyrone Tracy has been really good up to this point when his number has been called again small sample size about a game and a half or so I really love what we got from 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 Tyrone Tracy so far and Darius Musa when his number when his name was called in week one he played a lot and he had himself the only interception the Giants have this season the Giants only have one interception it came in week one and it was a backup linebacker to do so so um you know we look at Joe Shane and his resume of drafting signing players trades I think he's been active and I think active is probably the best word but effective. Uh, the jury's still out on Joe Shane being effective on this uh, for this roster. Now we can look at some of his accomplishments. You know he helped that wide receiving core out a bit. Although I, me personally, I would have took a George Pickens, who are we, we are facing this week. I would have took a George Pickens over Wandale Robinson, but. He stuck to his guns, stuck to his draft board, and picked up Malik Neighbors in this past draft. Um, addressed, addressed the tight end position multiple times, including a trade for Darren Waller. Um, and his accomplishment with the offensive line. He's probably done the best with the offensive line that any GM has done up to this point in the past, I, I want to say, 15 years. You know, uh, you know, I know Andrew Thomas is a Dave Gettleman pick, but picking up Jermaine Illuminor on what is now a cheap bargain price John Runyon uh, to to bring him in and Greg Van Roten as a nice band aid. You know, Greg Greg Van Roten isn't spectacular by any means of the word, but he was he was signed later in the season. He wasn't a priority free agent, and he's a starter and he's and he's performing fine at that point right now. You know, and he's drafted guys like JMS. So and uh, on top of that, he's helped the pass rush with Kayvon Thibodeau and Brian Burns. Uh, brought in Bobby O'Karaki and, and and drafted Micah McFadden. These are really good players, um, in my opinion. So he has had some hits. He's had had some good accomplishments uh, trading for players. But you know the jury's still out. On, like like let's let's say the 2023 class, the one right before this. Tay Banks. We don't know what the hell he is yet. You know JMS isn't isn't great up to this point. Um, you know and 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 it's just. It's not looking good, and Jalen Hyatt can't even get on the field, let alone catch a ball. So, it's 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 very mixed for Joe Shane. If you ask me, I would be way more upset if the Giants let go of Brian Dable than Joe Shane. Would I want to keep both of them? I'd say I'd give Joe Shane another chance, but I wouldn't lose any sleep if Joe Shane were to be fired at the end of this offseason. I do love Joe Shane. I love his charisma. I love his energy. I love his passion. I love his young mindset to the game. I just, he's not been effective. He's been active, and, you know, the more darts you throw at a dartboard, the more likely you are to get some hits, but you've got to be efficient, and, you know, you got to, 
I want you to I want you to hit more targets with with less darts. If you guys know what I, what I'm trying to get at, I want you to hit more targets with less of the darts. Stop stop being so active. You don't have to be so active. I love that he's active, but let's be effective too. Why why don't we we be effective as well? So that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. Do you guys think that it's right to keep Brian Dable and Joe Shane? As far as Brian Dable goes, he's had he's had his gripes, right? I've been very critical of Brian Dable, very much so, more than a lot of people have about his play calling and play designs, because I actually watched the film. You know, this past game against the Philadelphia Eagles was not great um, as far as his play designs and play calling goes, but not every game is going to be perfect. Not every game is going to be a well-coached game. Um, you just hope that they he learns from it and the team learns from it and they move on, but I do have a lot of faith in Brian Dable. I do. I do. I think he is the guy, and I think we need to we need to get him the quarterback, and he needs to go out there and coach that quarterback up to help us win a Super Bowl. You know that that that's that's what we got to do. So, um, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, guys. What do you guys think about this? You think Brian Dable and Joe Shane should be fired, or you want to give them another chance? How long would you uh, give their leash? How many more years would you give both of these guys? And, uh, yeah, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe if you guys are new. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Woo!